In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace, mercy, and peace of our Lord and Savior be with all of you. And with your spirit. Good morning and welcome as we are privileged to celebrate this Holy Eucharist on the 23rd Sunday of Summer Ordinary Time and this Labor Day weekend, which in some counts is the end of the summer season, but yet we enjoy the warmth and the goodness of this time. And so a special prayer for the goodness of work in all of its ways and all of its forms and hopes. So let us prepare to celebrate the sacred liturgy. As we call to mind our sins, let us open our hearts to God's divine mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us into the work of our faith. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us from our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace to people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, you we adore you, we glorify you, you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. You For you alone are the Holy, Holy One. One. You, you alone, alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, we may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Say to those whose hearts are frightened, Be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication. With divine recompense, he came to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag. Then the tongue of the mute will sing. Streams will burst forth in the desert and rivers in the steppe. The burning sands will become pools and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord, my soul. The God of Jacob keeps faith forever, secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets captives free. Praise, Praise the, Lord, the Lord, my, my soul. soul. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who were bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. Praise the Lord, my soul. The fatherless and the widow the Lord sustains, but the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever, your God, O Zion, through all generations. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, my soul. A reading from the letter of St. James. My brothers and sisters, show no partiality as you adhere to the faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. For if a man with gold rings and fine clothes comes into your assembly, and a poor person in shabby clothes also comes in, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say, sit here, please, while you say to the poor one, stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil designs? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, did not God choose those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom that he promised to those who love him? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus again left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought him to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and spitting touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Epephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened, his speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Remember last Sunday as we celebrated Eucharist with sacred scripture and quoting some of the words of this wonderful Pope Francis that we're invited again as we do actually every Sunday but in a particular way to reflect on the fundamental call of our baptism which is the call to holiness, the call to become saints and know that every one of us is gifted with that ability through the giftedness of the grace of baptism, through God's great love for us, that you and I continually become holy. You and I continually become saints as we live our lives each and every day. That's the work of our faith. That's the work of Christianity. And the end result is that you and I, peoples everywhere, Christians catching that word and growing in that relationship with Jesus Christ and living his word more effectively, we have the power and the ability to radically change this world, to change our families, our schools, our workplaces, our communities, wherever it might be. And we know how radically our world needs that kind of change. Pope Francis on Friday evening on a wonderful television interview was uh, quoting and talking about how all peoples everywhere have to grow the gift of friendship that all of our human relationships would be growing toward that one goal of becoming friends with each other, respectful, uplifting, living love and care in respect of each other over and over again. Remember last Sunday's second reading from St. James was calling us to be in that same light, not just hearers of God's word, but doers. And we just hear God's word and let go in one ear and out the other, the teachings of the church, but that we continually are working with God's grace and the support of community, the support of others, to translate all of those words, those realities from not just visions and promises on a page, but into the fact that we're living realities and witnesses of the very truth of who Jesus Christ is. And so this morning, we listen to these prophetic words of, of Isaiah, who lived some 900 years before Christ was even born, speaking to the people a great heart desire of our God, who is all about gifting us with not only faith, but ability to grow the gift of life and to live it more fully now and for all eternity. The promising words that really speak to God's desire to heal us and to be able to enable all of us to remove any kind of obstacle that might get in the way of our, that relationship with God and that ability to live that faith each and every day. And so it was Isaiah in that second reading, or the first reading, <clears throat> that talked about to be strong and to fear not because the Lord comes to save you. Be strong and fear not. And then one of the great examples and realities of that kind of truth of God's presence and working in our lives and our world is that the eyes of the blind would be opened, that the ears of the deaf would be cleared, the lame 
would leap like stags, the tongues of the mute would sing. Marvelous promises, are they not? Words that for all of us, with all of our abilities and our disabilities, ring in powerful kinds of ways and promises of our God. And maybe the heart's desire of many is like you hearing God's word through the goodness this morning of Michelle's interpretation and being able to, to hear but seeing, but that we open our senses and that know that healing grace more effectively in our lives each and every day. That they're hope-filled promises, are they not? That meet us <clears throat> in our own challenges every single day of whatever those disabilities or abilities happen to be, that they're definite challenges for our society to become more and more supportive of all peoples and respectful and helpful in all peoples, no matter what their abilities or disabilities might be. It's the agenda and the challenge to the church, to our parishes, to become, and to bring that message of hope, but to become inclusive in every aspect of the life of the church. So to hear and to listen to that great word is precisely the growing agenda of the apostolates of the handicapped, working in greater, greater partnership with Catholic charities of our diocese and other diocesan agencies to help that hope and reality become more and more a truth in all of our parishes. But again, it's what James says, that we don't just become hearers, whether that hearing is done actually with our ears or the hearing that happens through interpretation, but that it becomes very much a part of our whole lives and how we live each and every day. And so it's a vision that, yes, that pointed directly to Jesus' reality, and like in the gospel this morning, that his healing of that person who was deaf and that so affected his speech, and healing to be able to allow him to hear, but also to be proclaimer of that goodness. And one of the interesting points that sometimes is missed, perhaps, in that gospel is that Jesus took this gentleman off by himself away from the crowds. It's kind of one of those great messages of how God very personally wants to enter into our lives and lead us and truly bring healing to us and whatever that might be, whatever our woundedness might be, whatever our, our sinfulness might be or whatever it is. And so in that grace, we always pray for that, the burdens that, that we face, that you face every single day. But it's also a metaphor for all of us to know that sometimes we become very deaf to God's ears, that we are hindered in our ability to be witnesses and to speak the truth in all of our life situations about God's presence and justice and respect for life. And so the scriptures also reference, as we listen to that miracle story, also reference to sometimes speaking to us the handicapped of our heart, which is where God really always wants to meet us in powerful ways to change our hearts and so to be able to change our behavior and our lives so that we can be more and more effectively about the work of Jesus Christ, the work of the church, the work of salvation, the work of helping all to come closer and closer to the Lord. Remember, as much as I love to celebrate baptisms with infants as well as all people of any age, that there is a wonderful prayer called the epitha that is part of that, that comes from the gospel today. That means be opened. And it's toward the end of the rite of baptism that it is that, that prayer that may the Lord soon touch your ears to hear his word and your mouth to proclaim your faith to the praise and glory of God our Father. And so it is in that goodness that we share together this morning this enriching gift of God's word that comes to us in different ways, the richness of his presence, the hope that he brings to us as you and I continue to grow and to live our faith, our church, in more effective ways. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker, maker of, of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. And invisible. I, I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, Christ the only begotten Son of God, God, born of the Father before all ages, God, God from God, God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by, by the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, Mary and became man. 
For our our sake sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My friends, as we await a world free of pain and suffering, we pray for our own needs, those of the church, those of our world. That we may not be judgmental of others, but rather present a compassionate, healing face open to all who suffer, working to an end on fair discrimination and prejudice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Pope Francis, Bishop Morlino, and the ministers of all faiths may guide all people to love the Lord, reaching out to all those in need and inspiring a greater respect for all life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's blessings this Labor Day weekend may be upon all workers, for all who contribute to our quality of life, for the unemployed or the underemployed, for the underpaid and those whose work is demanding, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those with difficulties in speech and hearing may find understanding and friendship, and those who are ill or disabled may know the love of God and the caring ministry of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may know the life prepared for them by the Eternal Father, especially Angus Lamont, our special intention today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now let us ask God's grace and love as we offer our own needs and intentions in our hearts. For these two, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy, we present our needs to you as a hopeful people, remembering your promises. Give us the grace <clears throat> to reach out in compassion so that all in need of healing, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Thank you. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may faithfully be united in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. 
fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of hosts, hosts heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the, the highest. highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may, be, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Thank you. Please minister his word of peace to those who may be near you. Peace be with you, Mark. And with your spirit. Thank you. Peace be with you, Will. Thank you. Peace be with you, JP. Thank you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. 
the body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As our Mass is now ended, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for sharing in this television celebration of the Mass this morning. It is with gratitude that we acknowledge the generosity and commitment of the family owners, station management, and staff of WISC-TV for their spirit of public service for people with disabilities and the homebound of all faiths, enabling this weekly Mass to be aired each Sunday morning here on Channel 3. Our presider of worship this morning was the director of the Apostolate to the Handicap for the Diocese of Madison and pastor of St. Clair of Assisi Parish in Monroe, Monsignor Larry Burke. The death of our faith community were able to share with us in worship by the interpretation of Michelle Gayette and Sister Bernadette Prohaska provided our music ministry. Our acolytes were J.P. Anhalt and Will Nowicki of Sacred Hearts Parish in Sun Prairie. And I am Mark Kaisley of St. Maria Gretti Parish in Madison, your lector and commentator. Until we worship again next Sunday morning, do have a blessed and beautiful week, and may you praise the Lord by what you see, hear, and speak. <laughs>